Hey everyone! To get started, create a project directory and initialize a Git repository inside it. Create a project.gitignore file. This excludes Python cache files and directories, as well as all .m files and the .vs code directory. Create a pipm virtual environment with a Python 3.8 interpreter. Install the pre-commit and pytest Django packages as dev dependencies. The pre-commit package allows us to easily install third-party Git hooks. The pytest Django package allows us to use pytest with Django. Testing is outside the scope of this tutorial, but it's a package that I like to have around in all of my projects. The pre-commit config file will run hooks on every commit. The first hook applies black code formatting to the staged files. If there is a diff after the hook runs, meaning that the code was not formatted according to Black's guidelines, it will fail and we will need to stage the changes it made before committing. The second hook applies linting to our staged code with Flake 8, a popular Python code linter. This helps us catch things like typos before committing them. Enter the pipm virtual environment and install the pre-commit hooks to your local Git repo. You can confirm that things are configured correctly by running pre-commit run. Looks good. Now commit your git ignore and pre-commit configs. I always commit with the verbose-v flag so I can see what is staged for commit before actually making the commit. It does require you to be familiar with a text-based editor like Vim though, so if you aren't comfortable with that, forget about the dash v flag for now and instead simply use the dash dash message flag and write your commit message right there. Install Django and use the Django admin command to start a project called webapp in a source directory. Let's install a few additional packages we will need for our next steps. Now open your settings.py file and we'll make four configuration changes after importing our conversion and DJ database URL packages. First, derive your secret key from an environment variable. This aligns well with the best practice of never committing secrets to a Git repository. Two, key Django's debug mode off of an environment variable as well. Set the default to false. Notice how we're using the conversion package here that we just installed to convert the string false into a Python bool object. Three, add Django command overrides to installed apps so we can take advantage of a custom start app command later on. Four, use DJ database URL to define our database connection. This package derives an entire Django database configuration from a single database URL environment variable. I'll show you what this environment variable should look like in a moment. So just out of habit here, I will run git status dash dash short to see what files are unstaged right now. Now let's commit these changes. Note that when we go to commit this, our black pre-commit hook will apply black code formatting to our staged files and fail because there's now a diff between what is staged and what the file actually contains. To fix this, we need to restage our files, now correctly formatted by black, for commit. It also looks like I have a typo in my settings file and misspelled database info. So I'm gonna go back in and fix that. All right, so I'll just run git status again to see what files have unstaged changes. Now I'll use git add dash dash patch to stage individual hunks from these files. This allows me to see exactly what I'm staging, hunk by hunk. And it looks like most of these changes made by Black were simply reformatting single quotes to double quotes, according to its standard. So let's go to commit these changes now. Oh, still an error. I guess I forgot to add the changes in the manage.py file. So let's add those. And now third time's the charm, git commit dash V. 
And there we go. See, these pre-commit hooks are already paying off. Now that we have a basic Django package configured and our pre-commit hook set up, let's create a Docker file to Dockerize our application. Here, we use a multi-stage build that generates a dev image, which we can use for local development. Our Docker image will rely on certain environment variables, like the Django secret key and the database URL. To inject these into our Docker environment, we can create a .m file and populate it. Our Docker compose file will take advantage of these variables in a moment. Now for the final piece, a Docker compose file. Create a file called docker compose.local. This file will define two services, a Postgres service that our app will talk to and use as a database, and our app service, which will run our Django app. The app service will build the image defined in our Docker file and inject the Django secret key and database URL environment variables. Rather than using the application files in the Docker image, we mount our project root into the Docker container and set its source as our working directory. We add our new working directory to our Python path via the Python path environment variable. This allows us to edit and run files on the fly without rebuilding our image every time. Now let's test that everything works by building our container and running some commands from inside of it. Building the container may take a minute. To get a shell, use the docker compose run command. From inside our container, run python manage.py startup ebookstore. This is going to create a new app within our Django project called ebookstore using an overridden startup command from the Django command overrides package that we installed earlier on. Now that we've run that, let's check that all the files are there. And there we go. We have our new Django app. If we exit the container, we can confirm that the files exist on our local machine as well. As I mentioned before, this is because we are mounting our local directory into our Docker container when we run it. This is a really nice trick for local development. So in summary, you now have a Django project that is itself containerized for local development talks to a containerized instance of Postgres, and runs git pre-commit hooks to enforce code formatting and linting on every commit. Nice work.